So, over the next 15 minutes, we'll look at how we can practically take some steps to prevent bacterial and fungal infections in NICU. If you look at how infection can enter baby, it's not difficult to see what can be different measures. So, one is DIT, it can enter through the tract, it can enter through the respiratory system, through various lines, through skin, various equipment we use on babies. And then, what is the culture of the unit, how different things are taken care of in the unit. And here I have outlined various interventions which can be done to prevent such things. One of the most important being hand hygiene. So let's try to look at few of them which can be implemented practically to decrease bacterial and fungal infections. First of all, you cannot prevent what you have not measured. If if I if someone asked you what was infection rate in last month in your unit and you cannot answer, then you cannot tell whether you can prevent infection or not. So first step is to measure how many infections are occurring every month in your unit. So follow standard definitions of uh, CDC or German definitions known as NEOFIS definitions to measure at least these four outcomes. Culture positive sepsis, probable sepsis, ventilator associated pneumonia and NEC. And remember that in all setup where gram negative organisms are dominating, any infection with onset after 24 hours is potentially hospital provided infection. Not only infections after 72 hours, any infection after 24 hours is potentially not a common infection. Now how to monitor? It is very simple. On x-axis just plot the month and on y-axis plot what percent of, percentage of babies have infection. And place a dot every month and you will see what is happening to infection rate. After 6-7 months you can plot a median and then see whether the infection is rising above or below the median. Now let's look at how, what are the different uh, points at which you can prevent infection. I hope there is no ban on quoting Pakistani papers at least. So this is a Pakistani paper uh, from an army hospital and they looked at what is there happening in the delivery room. Because baby can get infection in the delivery room also. And they looked at culture at different places and they grew bacillus, staphylococcus, lepsilla and diphthalmia. And they looked at various procedures which should have been done in the delivery room and many of them were not being carried out. No hand available. So that is just not being used, baby towels and that is dirty, suction tube not getting changed. So this is this is not only in Pakistan or any this, this is true for any developing country. So a baby can get infection right at the time of birth, and this is the one of the most important point which can be taken care of. We all know the importance of hand hygiene, and many of us have these kind of posters displayed near wash basins that these steps should be followed. But still, people do not follow hand washing. So, WHO has devised five steps to how one, one can improve the hand, hand hygiene rates. The first step is to improve the system. Alcohol and hand wash should be there at the point of care, which means at each bed or in pocket of each staff. Then there should be hand washing sink for every 10 beds. Soap and disposable towel should be there at every sink. After once this infrastructure is in place, Staff should be trained and educated about hand hygiene program. Then there should be survey, there should be hand hygiene observations, and one can monitor the rate of consumption of water and soap and hand rub to see whether people are washing hands or not. Then only once these things are in place, then it can display how to do hand washing and what are the five moments of hand hygiene. Then unless leaders also do hand washing properly for two minutes or one minute at a time of entry, residents and nurses do not do. So there has to be a culture of hand washing. And one should be forceful in implementing five moments of hand hygiene, not only before touching a patient, but also after touching a patient. Not only before you approach a patient surrounding, but also after touching baby surrounding. The second important intervention is to implement center line bundles. The bundles are various interventions which are packaged together and they are done practiced together. So far as center lines are concerned, there are three types of bundles. Insertion bundle, maintenance bundle and upcare bundle. For example, in insertion bundle, one can look at these six or seven simple steps that you have a center line card to have all items, traffic, upper limb, 
performing hand hygiene, inserting center line with maximum barrier precaution, disinfecting skin, using a chalai transparent, dressing, no blood stains, and keeping connecting pores away from battery. These all are very simple steps, and even if one of these steps is missed, patient has higher chances of getting infected. So a good idea is to have a checklist, simple checklist of six steps, a nurse can follow can take which of the steps have been followed and which steps have, been, have not been followed. So by following this, one can be sure that all the steps are followed. So similar checklists are also there for maintenance of central lines. Another very important uh, port of entry of bacteria in baby is not only central line, but peripheral line. Peripheral lines are much more commonly used, even in level 2 units peripheral lines are used and they also become a hub of infection. So similarly, one can use these 10 steps. These 10 steps are known as antiseptic, non technique. That at least 2% to the procedure, hand hygiene before the procedure, hand hygiene for assistant, cleaning the trolley on surface where equipment will be kept, assisting opening the equipment, not the main person, appropriate use of gloves, sterile before procedure, cleaning of site with a cover which are cover for at least 30 seconds each, protection of key parts at all time, and hand hygiene after procedure. So if ANTP is followed even for peripheral camera, their cause of infection can also be decreased. Many babies are ventilated and there is a ventilated bundle also which prevents bacterial combination of overfence in stomach and micro aspiration of contaminated secretions. So what is web bundle? Web bundle consists of eight items. Hand hygiene before any procedure, proper endotracheal tube care that a substance is followed during suction of endotracheal tube, humidification, Respiratory equipment care, using of clean respiratory equipment, baby position with head around 15 to 20 degree higher as compared to lower part of the body, no use of NADD or cordon pump blockers in babies, using enteral feeds as early as possible, and finally use of CPAP or nasal IMP immediate after extubation so that baby does not need intubation. So if all of these are followed, then one can decrease the range of ventilated associated pneumonia. Another very important intervention which we can practice is kangaroo mother care. Kangaroo mother care can reduce infection in NICU and studies have shown, five studies included in Dr. Nibu have shown that it is very effective. There is 46 to 78 percent reduction was seen in nosocomial sepsis in these five studies. How to do it? Important is to start early as soon as baby is stable and start it within NICU. Don't have a KMC ward but KMC facility within NICU. So don't wait till baby comes out, start KMC with it, uh, along the bed the baby. Another important intervention which all of us know is breastfeeding. So if mother is breastfeeding, her mammary glands will secrete antibodies to antigens to which both baby and mother are exposed. And by this baby gets a kind of vaccination against the common pathogens. So and studies have shown that Higher the amount of cumulative human milk intake, lower the chances of getting a positive blood culture. So how to practically improve the rate of breastfeeding in NICUs? Three important steps, or four important steps can improve the breastfeeding rates. Counseling of mothers in NTC period and immediately after birth. Education of staff regarding the importance of breastfeeding. Initiation of milk expression soon after birth, ideally within Within first 24 hours, if mother cannot come, pump can go to the mother and she should start expressing even whatever small amount is there and finally establishing milk bank if possible. These four things can improve the use of breastfeeding in babies who are admitted to NIC. Another important intervention is implementation of antibiotic stewardship program. Because if, if one uses more and more third generation cellosporin for low spectrum antibiotics, chances of babies getting fungal infection or babies getting infection with resistant organisms higher. So all units should have an antibiotic stewardship program. The components of this are prospective audit and feedback, restriction of formulary so that only consultant can, can uh, prescribe higher generation of antibiotics, major doctors cannot change at a spot of movement in the night time, have a written antibiotic policy, use right agent, dose, root and duration, and have antibiotic ordering form. Recently, a paper was published in Lancet Infection Diseases, known as Scout Study, which showed that implementation of antibiotic stewardship program can reduce 
the exposure to antibiotics, the days of antibiotics in an SU can reduce without changing the mortality due to sepsis or incidence of sepsis. So this is an example of antibiotic form uh, which we use in our unit that we, it shows that what is, whether blood culture has been sent, whether you are forming blood culture, what are the why antibiotics have been started, what dose is used, and then every two or three days there is a there is a uh, check that check culture before you continue so that you do not continue antibiotics unnecessarily. And on the back side of the form we have doses for different gestation in different ways so that one chart shows to the resident doctor which antibiotic to use, what dose to use so that it can be used appropriately. Lastly, coming to one important uh, uh, prophylactic agent for preventing fungal infections, fluconazole can decrease fungal infections by impairing the adherence of candida to endothelial and epithelial surfaces, decreasing biofilm formation and enhancing killing of candida. There have been 10 RCTs uh, using prophylactic antifungals. Out of these 10 RCTs, 9 have been conducted with intravenous fluconazole using different doses formulations and dose of 3 to 6 mg per kg. And all these studies have shown reduction of 40 to 70 percent in invasive candida assays. But there have been concerns about development of resistance to fluconazole. And you, if you look at individual studies, the sample size of studies is very small, around 40 to 50 babies in each study. And with the biggest study having around 150 to 200 babies. And if you look at the baseline incidence of fungal infection in these units, the baseline incidence is around 16 percent. So, the fluconazole prophylaxis can be effective if the rate of fungal infection is very high, more than 10% in your unit. If fungal infection is not seen, then there is no point in giving fluconazole to all babies. Uh, lastly, what I have told till now are individual interventions, doing hand washing, improving breastfeeding, implementing bundles, or implementing skin to skin contact. What works best in reducing nosocomial sepsis is having a system based changes. So earliest QI study which was done in India in newborn was done in 1985 in AIMS published by Dr. Mehran Singh in 1986-87 where they showed that using these three steps reducing unnecessary admissions, removing stock solutions and ensuring that there is IV site preparation before inserting IV cannula. These very three simple interventions reduced sepsis incidence from 38% to 80% reduce neonatal mortality and reduce sepsis case of healthy So these very simple interventions, if you look around the your NICU, are your nurses using big bottles of normal saline to, to, to dilute injections to flush the cannula? If they are using, remove that bottle. That bottle should not be there, only ampules should be available. If only ampules are there, they cannot use a bottle. These kind of system interventions can uh, decrease the risk of infection. Another, simple, another system intervention published by Dr. Ramesh uh, from Jaipur in the Palitology, they, they implemented these six interventions. Again, national admission policy, shorter NICU stay, asepsis routines, aggressive feeding, rational antibiotic therapy, training of nurses and protocol based treatment. All these are very simple interventions, no high fi technological interventions, and the rate of sepsis was decreased. Antibiotic use was reduced from 72 to 23%. Sepsis as a cause of death was reduced from 37% to 15%. So again, very simple interventions which can be done system-wide and which can reduce the chance of infection. Finally, to summarize, surveillance and auditing are the key to prevention. Unless we have surveillance and we know what are the rates of sepsis, you cannot prevent sepsis. Promote culture of asepsis by promoting hand hygiene, ensuring proper housekeeping and forming bundle approach for three things, peripheral cannula, Central lines and ventilated relationship in the movement. Lastly, it is very important to implement antibiotic stewardship program, and this is one intervention which can decrease the chance of fungal sepsis. Thank you. Is there a question for Dr. Chawla?